Uh, a Jedi Rider is somebody who knows their tools, they practice using them, uh, they, they're dedicated to using the tools, uh, and they know all the, the characteristics, the properties of their tools. So, uh, in other words, they know the basic force, as it were, the basic principles of their tools. In other words, the basic principles of writing. So I'm going to start with the perceptual process of, of, of reading. What do people see when they read? And this, this, this influences how you write. This is the image that I suggest people keep in their minds when they're thinking about their readers. That you have your reader in a warm embrace, that your reader feels comfortable, that you care about the reader, that you're going to lean them through the text slowly and effectively and enjoy it. You never let them over again. This is a very poor piece of writing. That refers back to interrupting. That's, this is what I mean by leading your, your reader through the, through, uh, through, through the text. If you use this, that, these, or those without explaining what you're talking about, your reader has to go back and figure out what it is you're talking about. I let go of their hand. So that's what I mean by not letting go of your reader's hand. We're going to talk about writing for the reading eye, the perceptual process of, of, of reading. And the most popular model is called the parallel recognition reading model. That says you don't read words a letter at a time. You read whole words, whole uh, phrases at a time. This is really, oops, this is really fascinating. When you when you uh, learn a word, which you know is thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, you don't see them as uh, words anymore. You see, you see them as pictures. You are reading pictures. Uh, and this is an example. Can you read that easily? Mm -hmm. I wonder why. Because you see the word as a holistic picture which you can decipher just almost instantaneously. And this is an example of what your eye does when it reads. Uh, the dot, this is an eye tracking uh, video, the dot shows where the eye is focused when it's reading. It's making these saccades, these jumps. And the size of the dot shows, uh, as it grows, shows how long the, the eye stays on a given word. Now there's a pattern here. There's a really critically important pattern here. I don't expect you to to uh, recognize it because reading uh, experts, reading scientists have to, have to go through tons and tons of, of uh, trials to recognize that. Your eye tends to land on visual landmark letters. It tends to, when it bounces, it tends to look for land from the visual landmark letters to land on. If you were to analyze that video I showed you before, it tends to pause on, um, uh, on planar words. It has to spend more time. So what that means in terms of reading is when I'm writing a sentence, I don't just look at the meaning of the sentence or the length of the word of the sentence or anything like that. I also look at the shape of the sentence. I think about the reading eye. How easy will it be for, that, uh, for the reading eye to decipher that sentence? So I will take a sentence that's too plainer and I'll go back and add, look for uh, synonyms that uh, have uh, visual landmarks. It's also why I indent more than my English teacher in high school would have liked. Because indentations are visual landmarks for the reading eye. I also use a lot of subheads. So you have to think about the, the, the reading eye. And it's also why active voice is so effective. See, these, these visual, these passive verbs are less readable. They're plainer. Um, active voice is more engaging because you have actor. You have an actor. A is doing something to B. And C is doing something to D. It's also more dynamic because it leads you through the text without letting go of your hand. A does something to B, and the next sentence C does something to B, and then B does something to F, and so forth. So active voice. I advocate using thrifty words rather than expensive words. If you look at all these words on the left, these are words that science love to use. So it's really hard to get out of the habit of not using thrifty words, but they put a lower cognitive load on your readers. Now, I suspect you'll probably find it difficult to use any of the word, these words in scientific articles because it's just difficult. But another thing you want to do is choose the best word. And my favorite uh, saying is the difference between the almost right word and the right word is the difference between the lightning bug and the lightning. Mark Twain was really right on when he said that. A lightning word is one that is in, uh, 
vivid, engaging, uh, uh, thrifty. It really grabs the reader. Crafty readable sentences. <laughs> you live in a culture that does not value crafting readable sentences. And it's tough to live in that culture and try to do de simple decorative sentences. And this is a study, this is some decades old, but it's a useful study. They uh, found, these scientists found a positive correlation between the prestige of 10 management journals and the reading difficulty. They said, this is weird. The more difficult they read, the more prestigious they are. Well, maybe there's some experiment we can do. So they asked faculty members to rate the prestige of so-called passages from managing journals, but they weren't real passages. They held the content constant and they varied the readability. And they found the passages that were more difficult to read were rated higher in research confidence. So recognize that you live in a you work in a culture that says, well, if I have lousy ideas, if I write them in a very complicated way, they'll get more uh, more uh, prestige. So it's it's tough to live in that in that culture. It's tough to deal with that culture. So text before that. This is writing instructor Gary Provost, and I apologize for putting all that text on the screen. But my point is, you're thinking about the words you use, thinking about the sentence structure you use, but you're thinking about the rhythm. You're thinking about how it sings to the mind. And so I pay, I pay attention to that when I'm writing, too. How, how, how is the mind going to take it? Uh, you also want to write hammock sentences. Hammock sentences depend on the fact that the reader is more interested in what you're saying at the beginning of a sentence in the end of a sentence. Which are you very close together. I'm not sure which of these folks is, which of these guys is the subject in which is the word. Of course, you define them at the beginning of your piece, but periodically down the piece, redefine them or use other words beside the acronym. If, if you only use an acronym once, you don't need it. It's useless. It's just put there for your own uh, edification. 